Audi A3 Sportback Review But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Since its introduction in 1999, the Audi A3 has been the conservative and consistent, if somewhat predictable, option in the premium family hatchback class. Now into its fourth generation, there's no longer a three-door body, but to compensate, the designers have delivered a more appealing design for the five-door sportback version. Just like its new generation seat Leon, Skoda Octavia and Volkswagen Golf Relations, the new A3 uses an evolution of the Volkswagen Group's ubiquitous MQB platform, with enhancements to accommodate a wider spread of powertrain options that will include mild hybrid and plug-in hybrid variants. Three main specifications will make up the A3 offering, Sport, Technic and S-Line, with each receiving subtle exterior styling differences. In the case of Technic and S-Line, the headlights feature a small panel of 15 LEDs that provides different light signatures for each version to give greater visual differentiation. Audi distinguishes the S-Line exterior further with larger honeycomb structures for the side vents and the three quattro inspired, blanked off, slots in the front of the bonnet. Higher spec edition 1 and 4 sprung versions will arrive after the start of sales. Anyone stepping out of the relatively minimalist cabin of the previous A3 and into this new one will be in for a shock, albeit mostly a pleasant one. There is a wider variety of materials and a dashboard that is, to a degree, split in two, with a more driver-focused design. Every A3 will come with a 10.25 inches digital instrument display as standard, with Audi offering a larger 12.3 inches version, as already featured in several of its other models, as an optional upgrade. There's also a 10.1 inches touchscreen that runs Audi's latest MIV 3 infotainment system. Smartphone mirroring for Android and Apple devices is available, although not wirelessly at launch. Usefully, there are both USB-A and USB-C ports in the center console and an angled wireless device charging pad. As in other smaller models in the Audi range, there isn't a secondary touchscreen for the climate control settings. Instead, there's a small cluster in the lower section of the dashboard with easy-to-reach physical buttons that make frequent adjustments possible without glancing away from the road. This is the preferable setup in our opinion. The A3 seats are also new and, in a bid to improve its environmental credentials, Audi now uses materials for the inlays that are manufactured from recycled PET bottles. According to the company, each A3 uses 45 discarded 1.5-liter plastic bottles in every set of seats with the new material. Aside from that, there's 6mm more elbow room in the front and 3mm more in the rear, thanks to an increase in the car's width. A 7mm increase in front head room and 2mm more shoulder room are also welcome, if small, improvements. The boot capacity of the A3 remains the same as in the previous generation, at 380 liters, and this increases to 1,200 liters when the rear seats are folded forward. From sports specification up, these are split 40 hours 20 minutes 40 seconds, rather than 4060. How does the new A3 Sportback perform on the road? Audi hasn't enjoyed a stellar reputation for giving its cars involving steering feel, but while the A3 isn't pitched as the last bastion of engaging dynamics, most buyers will likely have no cause for complaint. All of the models we drove came equipped with Audi's optional progressive steering, which uses a variable ratio rack. This makes the steering more direct the more you turn the wheel, which is great for parking, because you can get from lock to lock speedily, but it also makes the A3 feel incredibly biddable when attacking a sequence of especially tight corners. The variable ratio allows this without making the steering overly sensitive at or near the straight ahead position. It's a worthwhile upgrade no matter where you spend most of your time driving. Incidentally, the standard power steering system is electromechanical with speed sensitive assistance. Drivers can further adjust the feel of the steering by toggling through the different modes in the drive select function, available from Sport Trim. We found that it was only the sportier dynamic mode that made any real difference, predictably weighting up the steering to require more input force from the driver. And actually, as you wind unlock in this setting, there's an unpleasant amount of resistance, so we feel the steering is best left in the default mode.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.